This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Hey, and welcome back. You've probably been reading in the news about how a sharp increase in radiation levels have been detected in northern Scandinavia, specifically in Sweden. The question is, what did they find and where did they come from? Where exactly they came from, I don't know, and I don't think anybody does at present. But what they found is slightly worrying. The Swedish authorities detected cesium-134, cesium-137, and cobalt-60, and a few other even rarer isotopes. And none of these occur naturally. So how did they end up in the air sample in northern Scandinavia? These elements are so-called man-made. Man-made elements? How does that work? With some serious equipment, we can change atoms into different elements. We can even turn lead into gold. Elements are defined by the number of protons their atoms have in their nuclei. Lead has 82 protons and gold has 79. So to turn lead into gold, we would have to somehow force it to lose three of its protons. In 1903, physicists Ernest Rutherford and Frederick Soddy noticed that some thorium in their lab had converted itself into radium. Thorium, which has 90 protons, underwent alpha decay, losing two protons and turning into radium, which has 88 protons. Supposedly, Soddy said, Rutherford, this is transmutation. And Rutherford replied, Soddy, don't call it transmutation. They'll have our heads off as alchemists. Thanks a lot. Alchemy is exactly what happens inside a nuclear reactor. And sometimes in a bad way. I'm sure everybody watched the Chernobyl series on HBO. That terrible disaster caused by man's hubris. What are the good we did? It doesn't matter. What does matter is that to them, justice was done. See, a just world is a sane world. All of it. Madness. So nuclear power stations are actually the Philosopher's Stone. They literally turn one element into another, usually by splitting it. So you start with a very large element, neutrons, knocks off parts and makes other elements which don't occur naturally. Now, I hear that all the time. What does that mean? Not occurring naturally means that these elements are unstable they just wouldn't live long enough for the history of our planet to survive and be found in the Earth. So they're made experimentally or accidentally as the process of nuclear fission, pulling things apart. Here's some fascinating footage actually inside a reactor that is designed to make exotic elements, or so-called isotopes. Today we're going inside a nuclear reactor. And not just any reactor, but the reactor that is used to make the rare isotopes of elements like berkelium, californium, the ones that are so important for synthesizing the super heavy elements. Thanks, Dad. So what exactly is an isotope? That's a great question. An isotope is an element that has a varying number of atomic particles. So you can have like cesium-123, cesium-126. Some are stable and some are really unstable and tend to decay to lower numbers. So why do we want this stuff? Because it all tends to decay and the decay process actually gives out radiation. Well, they're very useful in things like medical procedures for treatment of cancer. You want a source of a decaying radioactive element to fire elements, protons probably, into your cancerous cells. Or we have them in smoke detectors. 
because they can ionize air and then we can detect smoke in it. And don't forget, humans are little meddling bastards that like to make stuff new to see what it does, and sometimes it's great. So I have a question for you nuclear physicists out there, and I'd love to know the answer. I think I kind of know roughly what's going on, but here's my dilemma. So light is a photon that is always produced when an electron changes energy. And so when it goes from a high to a low or from a low to a high state, it changes its state and outputs a photon of light. So you can imagine inside a fission reactor where lots of elements are changing state, if you could look inside, it must be incredibly bright with photons being produced. Is that true? Share your knowledge if you know the answer to that. What I think is that photons are produced in the so-called electromagnetic spectrum, but they're not in our visible range. In fact, what is produced is higher energy photons, i.e. gamma rays and other x-rays and things like that, which are you know, potentially lethal to us. But is also a large amount of optical wavelength, the small bit that we can see as humans, also produced. So inside a reaction vessel, is it incredibly bright? So do we now know where this radiation spike seen in Sweden really came from? Probably not. But do we now know what it is and how it was made? I hope you do. And that took research. As an investigative journalist and science reporter, I need to look at material from all over the world. Sometimes it's blocked in my home country and I use a VPN. And the VPN I choose is NordVPN. You can use NordVPN to change your country of origin, to virtually surf from anywhere in the world. And this will unlock media and research documents from countries that you wouldn't have access to. I use it all the time. I also trust NordVPN to both protect my identity and my data. It's my VPN of choice and I highly recommend you use it too. So today I can pass on an amazing offer, 70% discount using the promotional code PROF. Simon, look in the description for a link and sign up. You can get three years service with NordVPN for the price of two years. So unlock the world and be safe out there by using NordVPN. Mm -hmm.